Okay, so we filled this part in, and we now have our big ends, which is 8 and 8. We have a t same big end total. And then we have our little ends, 6, 1, and 1, and 4, and 4. Now, the hardest part about doing the presentation this way is that basically you guys can sit there and put me on 2x fast forward, slam through it as fast as possible, halfway do your notes, and be done with it. That's all well and good, but remember that this is not about checking a box. This is not about just completing the assignment. It's about understanding what you're learning because this is a skill, and I promise you you're going to see this later. So what I want you to do is practice doing this calculation. I'm going to guess that 75% of you are actually going to do this, and 25% are going to blow me off and decide, eh, she's not here, I don't care, I'm not doing it. Trust me, you're going to regret it. So make sure you practice this calculation and see if you can figure out for sample A what the Simpson's reciprocal index equals. Okay, now you're going to check your work with mine. So we have our big N, which is 8 times 8 minus 1, also known as 8 times 7. And then we have the sum of our little n times little n minus 1 plus the next little n plus the next little n. So if you look here, you can see it's you're adding up all of these down here. And so that ends up being 30 plus 0 plus 0. So you have a reciprocal index of 1.87. Now, what I want you to do is just take a note. What do you think that means? What does this, this tell us about Simpson's reciprocal index? Now, I want you to go ahead and do it again, but now that you understand the equation maybe a little bit better, go ahead and calculate the Simpson's reciprocal index for sample B. Okay. So what you get, again, big N is 8 times 8 minus 1, which is 56. And then we have 4 times 4 minus 1 plus 4 times 4 minus 1, which equals 24. When you do 56 divided by 24, you get 2. I may have rounded that a little bit. Um, so ask yourself, what does this tell you? Sample B has a slightly higher biodiversity index than sample A. Sample A was 1.87. Sample B is about 2. What does this tell us? So sample B, in this case, though it has less of a species count. It actually has less diversity, less richness, I should say. Having a more of an evenness is actually going to give it a slightly higher biodiversity according to Simpson's reciprocal index. Okay, so I think you guys all understand and know what extinction is the end of a species, the last individual of that species has died. Now we have two different types of extinctions. We have extinctions that exist in the wild and we have ex extinctions that, that exist worldwide. So um, extinction has been around forever and unfortunately now we are seeing rates of extinction at just insane rates due to human activity, um, but no matter what, the species that are best adapted to their environment, they're going to survive. Those that cannot adapt, their, their species is going to die off. As environments change, it could be that um, a new pressure causes the extinction of an organism that was really successful previously. 
Um, we're going to talk about this a lot more when we get to evolution and biodiversity. But what you need to know is that even though many species have gone extinct due to natural processes, humans on the ecosystem, uh, human impact, has greatly accelerated this species extinction in the world. And we've had to take some measures to make sure that these animals do not go fully extinct. They might be extinct in the wild, but they are not necessarily extinct um, in the world because we are keeping them alive through species survival plans in human care. My question for you, what anthropogenic factors lead to extinction? What do you think? Okay, some of these are habitat destruction, pollution, overfishing or hunting, climate change, invasive species. The list goes on and on and on. So just a little side note. Um, I'm not sure why they throw in extinction into this particular uh, subchapter. But what we're going to do is we're going to pause there. It's a quick shorter and um shorter set of notes here because c.4 is going to continue talking about nature reserves and different types of conservation so more to come on that next you're doing great miss you all